If you're making an apple cake, there are three reasons why you should use a bunt pan. First, bunt cakes are simple and usually don't require a stand mixer. Second, the unique shape of a bunt cake means no assembling of cake layers or fancy frostings. And finally, the pan itself is perfect for dense cakes, like an apple cake, because the chute in the center helps it bake through evenly. Well, those are good reasons to use a bunt pan, but let's talk about why you want to make an apple cake. All right. So we want an apple cake because we love the flavor of apples, but we found that too many apple cakes actually have very little flavor. There's a couple of reasons why. So let's talk a little bit about apple flavor and actual apples. You know, a lot of recipes use two pounds or more of apples in the cake, but it doesn't have enough flavor. So you think, I'm going to pack even more apples in there. Mm. All you get is more moisture, a lot more moisture and very little flavor. It ends up being very dense, too dense, gummy, with big pockets of apple chunks in there. It kind of steams right around it. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to introduce really concentrated apple flavor without adding too much moisture, which kind of contradicts what I'm about to say. This is what we're adding. A quart of moisture. <laughs> A quart of moisture. Now this is four cups of apple cider. It takes three pounds of apples actually to make a quart of cider. But we're gonna concentrate this even more. So let's go over to our skillet. Nice wide surface area. It's going to allow for evaporation. So I'm going to put this over high heat and we're gonna let this reduce down to one cup, about 20 to 25 minutes. In the meantime, we are going to add some apples. Yay. One and a half pounds of Granny Smith's. So now we are going to grate these apples. We're gonna use our food processor. We outfitted it here with our shredding disc. Let's put all that grated apple right into a bowl. That really was pretty fast. Super fast. A lot fast. faster than using a box grater, and your knuckles are intact. <laughs> that is an added ingredient we don't want. And now I'm going to put a piece of plastic right on the apples, just to help keep them from turning too brown. Now, they might discolor a little bit, and that is just fine, because they will also brown in the cake. It's assembly time. This is our cider that we reduced. I've got a half a cup of here we're going to use in our cake, and another half here just to prove that it is actually a <laughs> cup. Well, actually, you can see it's just a little bit thicker, but it's a lot darker in color. So we're going to use this cider all over the cake, inside <laughs> and out, but let's start on the outside. We're going to make a confectioner sugar apple glaze. So much easier than a frosting. So I have here confectioner sugar. This is three quarter cup of confectioner sugar, and I will add two tablespoons of our reduced cider and I'll whisk this together. It comes together so quickly with very little liquid in there. Ooh, it's gonna be good. I do wanna cover it with a little bit of plastic wrap. It can tend to dry out since it has confectioner sugar. So let's get together our dry ingredients. This is three and three quarter cup of all purpose flour. We're going to add one and a half teaspoons of table salt. Some leavening, we have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Two leaveners. Two leaveners, that's also going to help with browning. And we have three quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. So these are very autumnal flavors. Exactly, and not a lot of spice in here too. We want that apple flavor to come through. So we'll go ahead and put our half cup more of the reduced glaze in here. I've got two sticks of unsalted butter that are melted. And this is one and a half cups of packed dark brown sugar, yum. Three eggs and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So all that brown sugar is going to add a really deep, hearty flavor to this apple cake. Exactly. So we just want to whisk all this together, break up those egg yolks. And at this point, I'm just trying to get out any lumps from that brown sugar. So that's looking good. Now we're going to add this to our dry mix. And I'll stir this just until most of the flour has been incorporated into the cake. But I still want to see a few streaks in here because we have not added the apples yet. Oh, you can smell it already. Mm-hmm. That's looking good, and you still can see some of that flour in there. So we'll add our apples. We're gonna pour these in. Again, that was one and a half pounds of apples, Granny Smith's, that we went ahead and grated, and also any of the juices that were accumulated in the bowl. Now we're gonna put this in a 12 cup bunt pan. It's a nonstick bunt pan, and you can grease and flour it, which is a little bit challenging, or you can spray it with baking spray that has flour in it. <laughs> so much easier. So much easier. So I'm gonna pour this right in. It's very thick, so I'll try to go around the cake. I will spin the pan for you. Oh, I like that. And I'll just make sure that it's evenly dispersed through the pan. This looks great. Now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven. We'll keep it in there between 55 to 65 minutes. Wow. You can really smell the apple. What a beautiful cake. And it's not even out of the pan yet. 
So let's check and see if it's done. What we're looking for, when I put a skewer right into the middle of the cake, it should come out clean. There you go, nice and clean. All right, so now we're gonna leave this in the pan for just a few minutes, but I do wanna start applying the rest of that reduced apple cider. This is a tablespoon of it. I'm gonna brush it right over the top of the cake while it's hot. So we're calling this the top of the cake now, but actually when we flip it out, it'll be the bottom of the cake. Exactly. So we're gonna leave this here for about 10 minutes. The cake is going to pull away from the sides of the pan during that time, and it'll be a little bit more sturdy so we can turn it out. All right, 10 minutes after we brushed that beautiful cider on that first side, so now we're gonna turn the cake out. I'm gonna turn it out onto a wire rack over a rimmed baking sheet because we want this to catch any drip. And there we go. Ooh. You can tell it's still pretty hot. <laughs> it is still steaming. It's a perfect time for us to put the remaining reduced cider all over. So this is about five tablespoons more. I'm gonna brush it all over this beautiful hot cake and it's just going to slurp it up like a thirsty child on a summer day. That looks great. The cake has cooled another 20 minutes after we put the glaze all over this side. Oh, it just smells so good. It smells amazing. And now we get to use our confectioner's sugar glaze that we made earlier. But I do want to stir it around just a little bit to loosen it up. And we'll use the spoon to drizzle it all over the cake. And the glaze is quite thick, but you actually want that for a couple of reasons. The cake is still hot, so it's going to thin out that glaze, but you want it to cling to the cake. I've seen some glazes that are just so thin and they're actually easy to kind of flick all over a cake, but then you end up with a glazed tray and not a glazed cake because it falls right Such off. Such a bummer. All right, so I'm just going to finish glazing this. We're gonna let it cool for two hours. Need it to cool completely before we cut into it and eat it. Now, during that time, some of this glaze is actually gonna soak into the cake, kind of soften that appearance, but don't worry. It's not that I ate the glaze <laughs> off of it, it's still in the cake. All right. Slicing time. All right. All right. The other great thing about bunt cakes is the ridges really help delineate what the different portion sizes are. Beautiful. Ooh. Mmm. Applicious. The texture of the crumb, you know, it's moist, but it's not dense. It's tender. It's not overspiced either. No. A little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of allspice. Mmm. And you can really just, you can taste the apple through and through. To make this easy and elegant dessert, start by reducing apple cider. Make a very thick cake batter, then stir in a whopping one and a half pounds of shredded Granny Smith apples. Bake in a bunt pan, then finish with a cider glaze. And there you have it. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, the ultimate recipe for cider glazed apple bunt cake. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.